The Japanese offensive into the Dutch East Indies is off to a slow and unimpressive start. While they were able to land troops at the Allied base of Sandakan, they were not able to identify a suggested Abdicom task force consisting of two battleships. For as long as this task force eludes the Japanese, the Japanese will not be able to strike with any precision or good intelligence further into the Dutch East Indies. Furthermore, the Abdicom forces are making it well known that they are the ones with air superiority in the region with their many high-level airfields. This pressure has come in the form of constantly shadowing the Japanese task force Crane as well as trying to hit a supply task force headed for Tarakan. If the Japanese do not make any significant advances soon, they may never achieve their goals of dominating the Dutch East Indies and will have to withdraw with nothing to show for it. Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to War on the Sea with a centrifugal offensive mod where we are the Japanese in their attempt to capture the bases in the Dutch East Indies. We have finally sighted that battleship task force. It is headed by King George V and a repulse. Very, very nasty targets here indeed. We've scouted this out previously to this engagement, of course, and we've sent in a group of nine Helens armed with one 800 kilogram armor piercing bomb each. And we're going to try and be a little too fancy here. We're going to come from multiple directions. Let's see if we can do that. Don't, doesn't look like we're really turning here according to our nav point orders. So we'll do that a little more concisely. There we go. But this group is absolutely coming in to strike first before the enemy does try to maneuver too much and we're going to make sure our bomb doors are open with everyone so if we come down here make sure that has in fact worked move to the bottom plane here they certainly have brilliant that's the first step <laughs> but we're gonna try and hit this manually that's why we've got our bomb doors open already we're gonna zoom right into the map and adjust our course as we see fit here Gonna try and give this a small lead, I think, to adjust for, of course, bomb travel time. It looks like, just gonna pause here to readjust the map, and gonna just readjust our speed, and that will do for now. Really, just a little difficult to get this on, but that's not looking too bad at all. Just turn in the tiniest bit and drop now. Fingers crossed we get at least the one hit there. That will allow us to increase our speed, gonna increase our altitude as well, and pull out over in this direction to ignore the enemy's AA. We're gonna see if we are in fact turning in now. Looks like we are. We're just gonna reduce our speed here to get a tighter turn. Have already lost Helen, unfortunately. Are we gonna get a hit though with this group? We do get one hit right on the command bridge by the looks of things, and that is absolutely brilliant. In fact, we can see they have an internal fire here already, which is brilliant. Helen down there, of course. We're going to have to turn in, though, with this group before it's too late. And yeah, we'll just make sure that's all good on this group. Lovely. We'll keep our formation set here, like so, because that ship is going to be manoeuvring. And we'll turn in here for another manual drop, make sure we have everyone controlled there. Double check that our bomb doors are open, they certainly are. Let's move in with the minimap once again. Have our finger ready on the drop button. Make sure we're not turning in too hard there. I think we've just uh, discovered enemy planes. Drop now. That might just be a miss because we were struggling a little there and we do see enemy planes. So we're going to just pause, make sure we've come out here. And we're going to watch this group here, which is now going to line ahead. Make sure we are keeping our fingers on the trigger there. Keep an eye on the dip. Uh, I want to see. <laughs> I've got a nickname for someone called George at work. <laughs> I keep wanting to say that. But two excellent hits by those things there. Maybe even a Helen downed into that. We'll have to keep a close eye on that. Maybe we'll replay that zoomed in in just a second because you can see the fires absolutely roaring on the King George there. And that is absolutely atrocious, if that's what I think it is. 
for them. <laughs> We're going to want to keep turning here because the King George is doing so itself. And I think we just keep there for the lead we need. And that'll be excellent. Once again, increase our speed and altitude. Keep on that line. And fingers crossed, we get some good hits here. Well, the camera did snap, but we did see that we missed. Just about missed. And that is a real shame, because do you see this list on that bow already? What has happened with that? What has happened with that? Well, what's happening with us is we're getting tailed away. Tailed, chased off. We're going to issue a retreat order. And yeah, we are not going max speed with this group, but I don't think it's going to make much difference. Let's try and turn completely away from the enemy there, of course. How about this group? Yeah, that's doing what it can. We have to play with our altitude to really avoid them, but there's not a lot we can do against those uh, heavy fighters they have there. But what is going on with this King George? Critical damage to heavy flooding. That, that can't have been from just a couple of bomb hits like that. It's got the armor. Yeah, only two direct bombs it's reporting. No magazine detonation. I think we just got very, very lucky, perhaps, with a downed Helen. We could have to rewatch that. Well, of course, that King George did survive, and I really wish we didn't just get that near miss with the last bomb drop there. We do lose four aircraft in total, otherwise, it did very safely get away. Uh, so, we're going to, of course, RCB going to mark that up over here as of course a battleship group you find that correctly here we go you can see they're not too far away from task force crane they are very nearly 200 kilometers away there so we're going to do we have time we certainly do to get out some nails with torpedoes to finish that off we might get a little greedy and try and get a couple nails to hit the repulse as well and we have managed to re-establish contact with that task force, which is brilliant. We're going to instantly dive down to torpedo altitude here, increase our speed with the first group of nails. The second group, just uh, make sure we know exactly what the formation is looking like, exactly the same as it was previously. So what we're going to do is slow down with this first group of nails, very slow speed indeed. But with the second group, we are going to dive down to a torpedo altitude, but we're going to increase our speed to max and try and come around from a different angle. We will, of course, target and identify the King George here with both groups. And what we'll do is make sure we're coming out wide here, like so. And we'll come and approach from the flank. And, hmm, you know, I think actually with one group, we'll try and strike that uh, repulse just because I'm very greedy. And I've got a feeling we are going to be able to hit this quite nicely. If not, then uh, we've missed out on both. But uh, it's definitely retreating. And we can certainly come in later. Well, they're definitely not making this easy for us. Uh, they're clearly manoeuvring against us, as they should do, of course. But uh, we're going to try and get a little more perpendicular here with this first group of nails, which is definitely going to try and hit the King George themselves. It's just a very interesting angle now that they are manoeuvring against us. I'm going to try and just speed along here. We have increased the speed of this group of nails, but not so much that uh, they over overshoot themselves. I'm going to start turning in very soon. In fact, I think it will increase their speed uh, at the moment. Like so. Not too much though. So we need to turn it down to be more torpedo friendly soon. Having said that, let's reduce the speed of this group of nails. We'll start turning in because we're fairly perpendicular now. We're not going to fight, uh, drop this manually because I'm not very good at leading the torpedoes. So we're going to attack now that we do have a good angle to shoot them from. And that will be pretty damn decent I think. So long as we evade all of this small arms and flat coming out, I think really it should be dropping now. But uh, we'll leave it up to the pilots, they know best, it's what they're trained for. And we do successfully drop, just before we lose a nail there.
Well, the question is, do we think that King George is going to go down after just two torpedo hits? I think not. We're going to target it with the second group, and we're going to go in with this strike, I think. The problem is we've got to come from the front very succinctly now because of that repulse's uh, position, blocking off our torpedo drop. So we're going to max speed to shoot over that line. And it's going to be very difficult because this will extend the time we're in that AA fire, of course. And I think we're probably just about okay to start turning now. We will turn down our speed to make that turn tighter. Got to watch out for stalling now, of course. But that is not going to be easy with that repulse in the way now. Well, apparently the King George uh, can maintain extreme flooding on its bow, and it's refusing to sink. Um, no doubt that's the uh, masses amount of uh, water flooding the bow have uh, helped with any deck fires there. So <laughs> I don't know, you tell me why this isn't sunk. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we're going to have to come back for that later, which is a shame. A real, real shame there. We only leave with one nail from that uh, battle and we do still have to wait to uh, issue the retreat command despite having left the tactical area there. So let's take a look at our strategic position shall we? We will of course return to base with this group here. It is now 1425 hours. We did retreat away from that battleship task force with task force Ukraine which was previously positioned right here. So you can see uh, the enemy smelt blood after scouting us out and thought they could take us on. Luckily, we were alive to it and reacted to it quite well. So we have landed on Tarakan, and you can see, even though we have some fair troops and supplies there, it's not gonna be enough. The balance of power is not in our favor. We might think about strategically bombing that to help us out, uh, but I'm not entirely convinced that we will do the job. We are on our way back to Deval over here, and I think we pick up over there just as many troops as possible uh, to land on Tarakan there because you can see we really are short on supplies less than a thousand there but we do have nearly 50,000 troops which does suggest in conjunction with Kuching being in a very similar weighted position there that we're going to have to take islands and bases and such without the use of proper supplies so really just as many troops as possible on each base to blitz through them and take these bases for ourselves as quickly as possible. So, Sandakan is looking in our favour. We will be taking that in the next couple of days, I would wager, which is excellent. Hopefully, that means we get more command points and such per week when we do take that over. Uh, let's see. Uh, per week, per friendly location, none at the moment is interesting. Uh, but we do get some from Port and... Mm, okay, from port ranks and not airfield ranks. We'll see if that changes um, when we do take an extra base because that might incentivize us actually to upgrade ports rather than airfields, which is interesting because we're not going to get anything out of them otherwise. But uh, command points are thin at the moment with only eight per week, which is absolutely nothing. So with that in mind, I think what we do is we keep scouting this area, see if that battleship task force does persist, and we might be tempted to try a cheeky surface engagement whereby we kite in and out with our massive use of torpedoes in this task force here, but we'll see about that. It's easier said than done, of course. Well, not a load to report to you guys, but over the previous day, we did sight an enemy corvette group uh, and it looks like we've picked up something slightly different here, just some minor destroyers and corvettes protecting them uh, just outside of, I believe it's Palembang. You can see they're firing out some spotting shells. We're doing the same. The range was 10 kilometers. I'm sure it still is. They've not just magically disappeared, but we're trying to find them. Clearly they have some sort of radar. We're going to just charge ahead towards them. We do have the armor to deal with this with our larger ships. So having said that, 
might decide to charge him with just the larger ships here. We do go to full speed at 35 knots. You can see that they are trying to fire out on our kamikaze over here. So what we'll do I think is actually break, do a massive port side turn to the rear here. Move away. We have re-identified them. So we have what we think is a Grimsby. Uh, we'll have to try and identify this correctly ourselves of course. And we can only see that at the moment. So let's get the uh, Fubuki over here to fire some spotting shells onto that. In fact, we have lost sight of it once again. So this is going to be a difficult one. <laughs> Well, we've opened fire with most of our ships. We have decided that this is, in fact, Van Ghent from the Dutch Navy, of course. Not getting any direct hits just yet, although having said that, there we go. It looks like Mogami has found a hit on to this leading torpedo boat here, and that is absolutely brilliant. It's because they have zero armor, of course, so massive caliber or heavy cruiser caliber. HE shells will completely rip through them. We're going to, have to turn around over here. So it do get a better broadside, and so we do, of course, change our course and speed. Looks like we've got some hits onto the Van Ghent as well. That is excellent. Firing out, and I've got to really appreciate the uh, sound effects coming out of these guns. It's absolutely brilliant. It's beautiful sound out of them. No, covered in smoke now, but uh, those fires are lighting us up. Slowing down how many spotting shells we're getting at now because we don't get too many of them. Look at that excellent fire midships with the Van Gent there, which is just brilliant. Are we firing out with the true Mogami? We certainly are. What's about Tone? That's only holding for the minute. I tell you what, let's try and stop that and get onto the number three Corvette, which we think is a Van Amstel. And once our solution builds up a tad, though, we get some narrow spotting fire onto that. Oh, this is absolutely brilliant. You love to see a little slaughter like this from time to time. Just what we need. These will really count, these little ships to pick up. So I'd love to get our sea lanes open. Are we fine with HE? We certainly are fine with HE with the Fubuki. Not entirely sure what the enemy's firing at now. So you're going to bring the Kamikaze back round. Is Nagara firing out? It's not. Let's fire out on to the Van Gent once again then because the number one is down excellent in fact we'll change over to the uh, Van Amstel there Nakuma has done a great job as far as the Van Amstel hold there thank you Tone uh, looking all right there let's get out should be firing just getting our guns on position there lovely might want to turn out a tiny bit more then just slow down our speed a tad how we're doing over here. Not the best of solutions, but this is the ship firing out our spotting shells. We are running out of, so I think we'd fire now HE. We shoot to kill. Because that's looking pretty damn decent. That should be going down fairly soon if we can keep the uh, pressure on there. What's Hats of Harrow up to? That's just spotting for now, so let's get firing out. And there you go, not the mightiest ships ever, but certainly an integral part to Abdukom's coastal defence there. And that does clear the waters for the future when we do decide to get out some submarines of our own. So that's excellent to pick up and some very much needed three command points as well. So the time is uh, two hours and 14. So we're going to try and run back over to the safety of Kuching and stay away from Palembang's air or just radar there so that we don't get scouted and bombarded by enemy airplanes there. Well, we have some good news, two pieces of good news. Firstly, we have taken over Sandakan with only some minor resistance remaining. We will need to, of course, get out some engineering and fuel to actually use that as an airfield to use the Nates and Nels available there. But that's absolutely brilliant that we can get that. 
We've also landed our reinforcements onto Tarakan, just on the edge of enemy's uh, radar there. So we'll see if we can get away from that. Okay. But the balance of power is certainly looking far more in our favour, despite being undersupplied. It looks like we are able to get away from there. I think what we're going to do is get some new air out, get some Oscars with drop tanks, and we'll bring them over the Task Force Crane. And we'll see if we can push a little more southerly over here, see if we can catch out some more enemy, ship it, enemy ships. So I'm not entirely liking how quiet it is. Suits us fine, of course, if it does stay quiet. Let's just get on with our resupplying and invasions. Here we go, what do we see down here? Enemy Jake's spotted by enemy fighters. We do see some enemy scouts coming out. What do we see? Another formation. We see a cruiser task force headed by the Exeter, and that is absolutely brilliant. I think we can try and force a surface engagement with that, if of course they do stay fairly close. So we have the Exeter, we have an Omaha light cruiser, and a host of Abercom destroyers. That's excellent. This appears to be, I believe, Jervis. Have a Clemson. Uh, we have, I believe that's an Admiralty of some sort. Actually, I think that's a. Uh, it will be Dutch. Let's double check. Um, let's see. Du -du 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 -du. It's not any of these, so I think that is perhaps an Admiralty. Do the Australians get many different destroyers? They get the Admiralty 5, and I think that's what it might be. So that's okay. And uh, was that it in terms of destroyers? I think so. Brilliant stuff. So we can certainly take this on. We do have overwhelming heavy cruiser firepower. Let's mark this up when we're able to leave. And actually there was just no sign of those fighters we saw on these strategic maps. That's absolutely fine. I'll mark that one up as cruiser. This will of course moved quite a long time ago. So what we'll do is we'll send a separate scout plane out to keep sight of that more directly. Send that to its last known location. And of course we'll prepare for it not being exactly there. But otherwise, Task Force Crane can come down. I think we'll move over here in between the islands so that we do stay away from the enemy's air radar. And fingers crossed we can catch up to that. Well, it's now 10, 25 hours on the following day. We've had to retreat out of enemy territory because we could not find that Exeter Task Force once again. We were shadowing it for quite a while, but we just couldn't make the speed up to catch that. Quite likely because Mogami herself is struggling with speed after being hit by a bomb on her propeller, but that's not a problem. We have found a couple more Corvette ships, which we've identified as an Australian Grimsby and a Dutch Flores. So that's not too bad. We can certainly take them on. Definitely not difficult targets. Just need to watch out for our own destroyers because their caliber guns will hurt our, our unarmored destroyers, of course. And Apparently they're going to cause internal explosions on our Nagara as well. That's interesting. I, I do wonder what that is because I'm certainly not the only one who's had this uh, issue. Not a problem. Let's start firing out. Not a problem. Not a problem, not a problem. We've got a very good solution on this floor is already. Mogami over here should be okay to fire as well. Oh, absolutely beautiful sound there. We'll make sure everyone else is firing now because we have less our solutions build up. And actually that is brilliant on the Sendai there, lovely stuff. Nakuma can fire us as well. And there's Tone firing. Well, let's see about that because of course it doesn't have any rear facing guns. Taking hits on to the Fubuki actually. See what I mean? We can take some damage on our destroyers. We do need to get the massive amount of firepower out as quickly as possible. Do get a direct hit onto the floor is over here, which is great. Oh, that's beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful. That should go down fairly quickly if that carries on.
But we did manage to sink those two minor ships there, but Fubuki suffered heavy damage. And to be quite honest, I refuse to believe that just a couple corvettes could cause such massive damage so quickly to one of our destroyers. Of course, we don't register as having any armor, so it's, it is feasible. But after seeing that explosion from the Sendai, after not taking any hits at all, I'm, I'm thinking something's going on. I'm thinking something's going on. But, you know, got to deal with it. That does mean, however, that we do have to say goodbye to Fubuki for now, because that's a lot, a lot of components damaged. Um, and actually, we'll, we'll just review that once again, very quickly. And actually, upon further inspection, uh, the integrity... You know, it's not going to make a lot of difference, but only one compartment there is at, well, two or three now, counting. <laughs> three of them are around 60. This is the only completely incapacitated module. Otherwise, the speed is at 95%, so really, Fubuki is perfectly serviceable. Um, once again, it is only Mogami suffering some nasty damage with the three components flooded there. Um, in fact, it's not the propeller hit. Um, it's, it's down to 80% speed. But that, that does mean we don't have to say goodbye to Fubuki just yet. It's really, in the grand scheme of things, just as vulnerable to damage as it is straight out the gate. So that's absolutely fine there. Let's chalk up exactly what we did destroy there. So yeah, we are right. It's an Admiralty S actually. That was not a Van Ghent. That's, that's absolutely fine. Down anyway. We do get two Grimsby's and a Flora's Patrol gunboat there, which is very, very nice indeed. So let's have a look actually once again at these CP income. And that's not changed after taking Sandakan there. That's very interesting indeed. I can only hope that changes and updates at the turn of the week or when we really do destroy the uh, enemy resistance there. We look for one more engagement today, guys, and that will have to do for that, I think. Well, that final engagement is going to be now, guys, immediately after that surface battle. We're going to lay down some smoke and we're going to be very happy that we do have some preemptive Oscar combat air patrol over Task Force Crane because the enemy has some heavy fighters in the area. That's not the problem. We have some what appears to be Dutch bombers coming in and they are going to be a problem. You can see the payload already, massive bomb under the right wing and a slightly smaller mini bomb on the second wing there. We are moving in our Oscars of course and we're going to make some sort of uh, maneuvers with our ships over here. Lay down smoke as we said and just go full speed, try and throw off the aim. We'll try and make some more concise movements as the enemy comes in here. Does it look like these heavy fighters have brought in any payloads of Hursar ships? Doesn't look like it just yet. Uh, actually, mm, no, I thought I saw a bomb under slung there uh, but oh, we'll, we'll just see. Really? That's all we can say? Looks like they are going for... It looks like it's going for the light cruiser. We haven't launched smoke with everyone. Why have we not launched smoke with everyone? That's what I, what I told people to do. It's interesting. Are we going to be dropping over here then? That's the question. Yeah, they're coming for the lead ship. We're going to increase our turn. Like so. And if we can, increase our speed for now. They are dropping bombs over us, as expected. Alrighty, well, everyone brace. How are we looking, though, for the engagements over here? Are we going to fire up to start with? Looks like we are, but not going to grab anything there. Looks like Makuma has been hit by bombs. That is not good at all. How's the damage looking? Oh, that has hit a propeller. Oh, no, is that previous? I believe that has his propeller. Not good. Not good at all. And I'll see a bloody thing. The smoke. Looks like we've just escaped some bomb hits there. Only because that's a very thin Hatsa Harrow. So nothing else in our formation has been hit just yet. We are downing these bombers over here, which is absolutely brilliant because their bombs will hurt that much more. Oh, I don't know if we can take this though. Really don't know if we can take this. Looks like, mm, no, we're not focusing exactly on, on one plane at the moment, so that's okay. Are we looking though? The Oscars have not got the most amazing firepower, so we do have to concentrate our firepower a tad. We're gonna get firing out here. Uh, we're gonna give it a go. We're gonna disappear. Okay. How's Mikama doing? Let's have a look. 
Yeah, we're going to be able to get on top of that fine. We've lost a secondary gun. I think we've lost a funnel. So it looks like that was largely central. Hmm. Not liking this, though. Not liking this. We'll see how we look. Uh, oh, so it's the speed put down to 31% capacity there. Is really going to hurt in any engagement whatsoever. We can't dodge torpedoes. And we're going to be sitting ducks for surface engagements, of course. We're going to be able to down this plane, though, I think. There we go. Lovely. We're going to get that one. Uh, maybe a follow-up Oscar will do it. We're going to get them. Yes. Excellent stuff. So, that's the price of greed for you, because we're tempted by all of that... Uh, <clears throat> because we've been tempted to uh, stay in enemy territory for just far too long I think we can stop now though with Bakuma and stop taking on any water and help our control teams out there yeah we're getting on top of that but because we've lost that funnel and the propeller though we might definitely have to send Bakuma home actually what's damage across the board looking like Suddenly a lot weaker, aren't we? Suddenly a lot weaker. And it looks like, what's going on here? Why is Fubuki acting independently? Not too sure, but we have stopped. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust that as moderate damage. That absolutely is heavy and unacceptable damage there from the Makuma. So we are unfortunately going to be sending that back. 32% speed capacity is just not acceptable. It's not enough. And we did lose a good 18 planes there. So we're very happy with that. Uh, we are certainly going to send Task Force Crane back. But the uh, actually we'll send that all back together in case we do get uh, intercepted by enemy aircraft along the way there. But that is unfortunately going to be all we have time for today, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's been quite the uh, session, if you ask me. We have managed to sink some minor enemy ships, just narrowly missing a King George V. But in return, the enemy has sent back our heavy cruiser Makuma. Uh, well, is that a fair trade? We'll see in the future, I suppose. In the near future, see how much we can uh, pressure that Exeter Task Force. But thank you very much for watching and I hope you have enjoyed it. Please do leave any feedback in the comments section. Always very helpful indeed. As I shall see you in the future. May all of your nights and days be auspicious. Goodbye.